Hi everyone! Today we'll be looking at how far are we from editing human embryos. If you're new to this channel, welcome! This is Mr. Singularity, where we explore the scientific and technological breakthroughs shaping the future as we know it. Be sure to stick to the end of the video and like, subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you don't miss any of our videos. As once a month, we share a community post that's exclusive to our subscribers, giving away some interesting prizes. It's only up for a few hours though, so keep a lookout. And without further ado, let's get into it. We may have DNA modified in human embryos now. We may also do so in a manner that moves the edits through generations, radically altering the genetic structure of a population. Nonetheless, doing it right is much easier to achieve. It is difficult to think about genome editing in the human germline without taking up the infant debacle in CRISPR. A rogue Chinese scientist conducted an edit on fertilized human embryos over a year ago, which potentially renders them immune to HIV infection. Two twin girls were born and each had several unplanned changes with unforeseen health effects in their genome, effects that could be passed on to their descendants. The brash effect to make science progress obviously demonstrates that, apart from questions of ethics and morals, when it comes to editing germline, that is conducting gene editing in the mother, semen, or embryo, we're really not there technically. Make no mistake, one day CRISPR will wipe out crippling genetic defects through whole family lines or even the human race, but there are plenty of technological problems that we need to overcome first to leverage its strength responsibly. Last week in a sweeping essay in science, Rebecca Lee and Dr. Kathy Nyken at the Human Embryo and Stem Cell Laboratory at the Francis Crick Institute in London, England, discussed those obstacles. CRISPR, as a gene editor, they explained, is getting more accurate and effective by the day. Nonetheless, we do need to consider how the method tangles with cells during early human development and steps slowly into germline editing. The details, they argue, won't only allow us to zoom in on human life development, this would also help inform the discussion about this technology's possible healthy and successful therapeutic applications, and fully open the doors to the human genome for good. How play Christ with our code of Genesis. One reason to seek germline editing is to correct dangerous genetic mutations. By CRISPRing, human embryos will also unveil insights into the very first stages of human embryo development. Evidence suggests that it may not be the safest way to attempt to learn how human embryos develop by researching mice, particularly when it comes to using those tests to tackle infertility and other medical problems. Through CRISPR, we have insight into the early phases that were totally unattainable previously. We may only solve issues of infertility, but maybe also encourage same-sex couples to have genetic children in the future. Another point that couples are still checking for life-threatening mutations during IVF, so it's not important to use CRISPR on top of that. The writers argued that, not valid, CRISPR, not selection during IVF, is the response because both parents have a common mutation that robs them of the right to produce a healthy child. In the end, presenting people with more choices empowers them to make the right decision for their families and their conditions, they said. How is genome editing so hard in embryos? It is where hard things get. The big one. We're also trying to find out how CRISPR functions in embryo forming cells, in the expectation that we can predict future errors. Let me explain. All the cells of the body have a death cycle, which is very similar to the life cycle of a human. Lots of life events, checkpoint, occur along the way. The cell may agree to divide and, so to speak, have children or temporarily stop its cycle and stop its own aging. In a cycle, the amount and positioning of the cell's DNA drastically varies in preparation for the next step of life. The issue, the way CRISPR functions relies strongly on the cycle of the cells. Despite being called a reader, CRISPR literally vandalizes the genome and causes breaks in the DNA strands. What we call gene editing is the DNA repair mechanism in the cell that goes into high gear, attempting to cover the mess left behind by CRISPR. To the common belief, adult cells, which cannot be replaced, terminate their own life cycle at a checkpoint. However, in embryo, cells aren't just as altruistic. Checkpoints are not completely developed, and even with extreme mutations, they will continue to evolve. Zooming back to the full picture, this ensures the resulting early stage embryo will begin to cause damage until it dies in the womb of the mother. To get around this, scientists have found other ways to force an embryo into embracing a stable DNA prototype after a CRISPR SNP, which will, in principle, reduce unnecessary mutations. Another suggestion is to insert the CRISPR system into fertilized embryos at a particular time, and it reaches the early stage embryo at the right time to eliminate breaks in DNA 
in both directions. Although technically feasible, the procedure is sort of like a person attempting to hop from a high-speed train into a particular cabin, although blindfolded on a fast-rotating Ferris wheel. Yet science is making headway. While we do not yet have a comprehensive cell cycle film in human embryos, several labs are starting to put one together, in expectations that it will potentially help pull off the blindfold when CRISPR is inserted. Some are trying as an option to apply CRISPR to sperm before fertilization. Around the same time, scientists are now attempting to describe the full spectrum of CRISPR-induced mutations. This is not just about inserting, exchanging, or removing similar gene keys. Rather, the spectrum of mutations is more complex, with large swathes of genetic rearrangements comparatively far from targeted locations, accidental wounds, and other dramatic lesions in DNA after CRISPR intervention. Maybe it's not shocking that the CRISPR baby edits weren't working as planned. Base editors, which move one genetic letter to another, could be a safer solution than the traditional hack and paste, the writer said. But the methods have not yet been tested in embryos, not even those from rats so far. Finally, the embryo needs to grow naturally into a baby within a womb for the edit to make difference to the infant. But the success rates are still relatively small for assisted reproductive technologies. Add a dose of genetic editing tool that slices through an increasingly fragile genomic environment and it is extremely difficult to keep the modified embryo healthy. Adding it all together, unfortunately there is just not enough evidence to explain the early embryo's ability to repair DNA, the author said. Is that bad news? Far be it. While we don't understand much yet, we have an amazing arsenal of methods to predict and test mutations in human embryos. Whether to decide precisely whether a gene-edited embryo is stable continues to be debated. For example, are five unintended mutations deemed okay? Around 500 to 5,000? That said, it is still incredibly helpful to have the resources to diagnose an embryo's genetic well-being from a tiny bit of DNA, particularly if we, as a culture, want to step towards germline editing as a cure. These statistical methods can only become more powerful with machine learning causing an ever larger splash in computating biology. Apply to this ever more successful CRISPR modifications and we're on the right track, as long as any future embryo editing implementations only come after in-depth public and policy consultations and meet a set of stringent ethical and safety requirements, the writer said. The Takeover Numerous countries and the World Health Organization have also proposed revised recommendations or regulations to turn on the brakes in response to the CRISPR baby fiasco. The technique isn't advanced enough for clinical use, the author said, and even more work is needed, not only to further develop CRISPR techniques, but to learn how it functions in human embryos particularly. In the end, we think about possibly developing the human race's future. Tiptoeing is the least we can do, rather than moving forwards. We must assume that the outcome is the birth of stable, disease-free babies with no possible long-term complications," concluded the authors. If you made it this far in the video, thank you, and welcome to the end of the video club. What's your take on this? Let me know down in the comments below, and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity, and I'll see you on the next one.